So Mammish native with Clayton on first. There's strike three. That's the breaking ball. So he set him up with some high heat. And there's the first out of the ball game for Hawkins. Yeah, good defender. He got, I had a player here that was a four-year starter for me, Matt, named Greg Legree. He's kind of on that same track a little bit where each year he's gotten a little bit better offensively, and, and he's always shown and proved that he can be a fantastic defensive catcher. Two twos pushed by. There's strike three, a wave from Guerrero, and back-to-back -back K's now for Hawkins. He's looking now for his third straight K. Yeah, settled in a little bit. It's a big Husky Cougar weekend. You know, his fifth-year senior here, so he's quite sure he's really geared up and ready to go. There it is, strike three. Three straight Ks for Hawkins after Clayton leads off with a single. It's graduation weekend here on the Palouse. Pretty good crowd here on a chilly night here at Bailey Brayton Field. And the one-two to Tincher. That's the fourth strikeout for Hawkins as Tincher waves at that one in the turf. Wow, and you know, and like a second, you know, in this conference right now, they have struck out the second most people in this conference, which is a good thing, but obviously giving up a little bit too many hits, so it's kind of a little bit feast or famine on the pitching side for them. Here's the one two to Ibarra. Strike three, the fifth straight K for Hawkins. Looking for back to back three K innings to start off the Huskies. Yeah, I think it's just really important for him to just keep on, you know, keep competing and fighting like you are, but keep your emotions under check and stay in control. The two two. Strike three, six straight Ks to start for Hawkins against Washington. We go to the bottom of the second. Dakota Hawkins is dealing here on the Palouse with six consecutive Huskies struck out. Yeah, they'll definitely be challenged tomorrow. Kiefer Lord, 94 to 98 miles an hour. With the Now he's kind of adding the, the curveball and the slider in the mix. So, you know, and there's always games to be played here too, Matt. You want to knock the guy out, so you, you start using the bullpen on Friday night. It changes the entire weekend. There's strike three, an off-speed pitch that comes into the bottom of the zone to DiCarlo. So it's not consecutive, but it is the seventh K of the outing through two and a third for Hawkins. Yeah, like I said, Dakota's going in, he's going out, and he's pitching the ball down. I think Criswell did a really nice job of bringing that pitch up and maybe earning that strike. And Here's the shortstop, Cam Clayton, in the box. The only hit of the ball game came from Clayton's bat so far. And he goes the opposite way with this one on the run to right is Swartz, and he makes a diving play to the corner and right. Nate Swartz has the second out of the third inning on a dive to the corner. Yeah, nice play by Swartz right there. If the ball gets down, we're probably minimum of second and third with a, maybe an outside chance of Snyder scoring in that situation, but nice jump on the ball. And we all know here, Matt, that probably right field is probably the most difficult place to play at Bailey Brayton because the ball blows out to right. Yeah, it is adventurous. No, I bet you they were expecting he was going to be, you know, pretty geared up and humped up and trying to, you know, pitch it more 92-94. Strike three, eighth K of the outing here for Hawkins. Another K, and that starts off the fourth inning. Here's the 0-2 from Hawkins. He's looking for his ninth K of this start. And gets it, a breaking ball that freezes Arquette. Another K starts us off here in the fifth. You scout for the Cardinals in the bigs. How much do teams value a player's ability to, to play in the cold, which is going to happen early in the year. There's strike three. Snyder chases that one in the turf. That is the 10th K and ties a career high for Hawkins, and we are here in the fifth. So Kyle's battling here, and the more pitches you see, the better opportunity that you're going to have, or even your teammates. This one is sliced into right, a blooper for the first hit of the ball game, and it drops down and spins to foul territory but scooped up there well, and the Cougars have their first base runner, and it breaks up a perfect game here in the fifth. And the 0-1 from Flesland is hit hard into the gap in right. On the run is Simpson. He won't get there. It pounds off the wall. Russell sprints around second. He's waved home. Throw from the relay is not in time. He's safe, and it's 1-0 Cougs. An RBI double for Elijah Hainline. Back-to-back -back hits are the first two hits of the night for the Cougs. Here's Harvey in the box now. Struck out looking back in the third. And Fleslin looks like he stepped off the hill and got tripped up. Yeah, and he like bombs. Yeah, he looks like he caught a cleat on yeah. that turf. And, and Hainline's going to score. And, and really, that's tough for Fleslin. Simpson with a very conservative lead at first. Can run a little better than you'd think, though, right? Yeah, for a big body type, he's he's really better underway. He's not a real base stealer, two, two, but underway is pretty good. Could be two. Russell scoops to Hainline for one. Turn to first. There's a double play. And two down here in the sixth. That's a routine 6-4-3. Not that they can't do it, but 
right now it's it's tough sledding the way Dakota's pitching. 0-2, oh, strike three on three pitches, and it's the 12th K for Dakota Hawkins tonight. This is the cleanup hitter here for Washington with a runner on first. That's Simpson there at first, and he represents the tying run. No, too. If he's a little bit hobbled, too, the ball's going to have to probably get past the outfielders to give Simpson any chance to score. The 1-1 one -one is lifted deep to center field. Advincula's back to the track. He's at the wall. He leaps up, and he makes the play in center field. Advincula throws it in toward first. Simpson is back, but there's the defensive play of the game tonight. Absolutely. Because right. yeah, if that ball hits the wall, it's second and third for sure right now with Tincher up with one out. Galber, the 0-2 now to Tincher. Swung out and missed, strike three. Calber gets the K, but it's Advincula, the center fielder for the Cougs, who's the defensive hero in the top of the eighth. One down in a one-run game. You got Michael Snyder, the third baseman on deck as the Huskies are trying to get a base runner on here. Or tie it up with a big blast. Yeah, it looks like they got Brown pinch hitting for him too, so they're already gonna go to the left-handed bat. And Michael Brown's on the on-deck circle. There's strike three, fastball outside corner. And Calber has put down the first two here in the ninth. Two ball, two strike count here to Brown. Calber deals. Ball game over, strike three. Washington State takes the Friday of this rivalry series. Two to one, coach a pitcher's duel, and it goes Washington State's way. Dakota Hawkins and Fleslin were both fabulous tonight, but the Cougs with their two runs in the middle of this ball game get the win. Yeah, just one inning, obviously, just it starts with just something soft, the, the single by Russell over the first baseman's head, followed up by the hand line double, that got it going. Fleslin pitched great, but Hawkins pitched better. You could tell he was trying to set the tone from inning one.